High Adventure. Tonight we tell the story, Where Do We Find Such Men? by Denver Morgan. Every General R280 radial has 364 little safety studs between its treads. The studs are there to brace and stabilize the treads and help stop them fidget under stress. And the fact that we've reduced the fidget in our treads explains why the General R280 breaks so well, corners so well, and has the longest possible life. General R280 radials. The long-living tires. The Triumph Chicane is very fast and very luxurious, and we've kept it very quiet, but the motoring press hasn't. Car magazine said of the Triumph Chicane, Our test crew found it a delightful car to drive, and it has magnificent balance between performance and easy driving. S.A. Motor said, The Triumph Chicane offers a standard of motoring way out of its price range. Triumph Chicane, built by Leyland. Listen to what the experts say about it. Hello, John. Thought you'd never get here. What'll it be? Oh, the usual. Barman. Brandy and soda over here. Well, how does it feel to be a free man? Be good. You? Not bad. Do you know I met in the city? The Colonel. Looked me straight in the eye and gave me his... This is it, chaps. Look. Didn't say a word. Just stalked by. What did you expect him to say? Hello, Wade, old boy. Nice to see you out of jail. You and Smythe let the regiment down, you know, selling off army equipment. Bad show. Never mind. Come down to the club and have a drink. Our only crime was we got caught. Where have you been, anyhow? Yeah, walking around London trying to find a job. Uh, pretty much the same with me. Nora's left me, sold the house over my head whilst I was inside. My son's got hair down to his shoulders and tells me he's trying to find himself. He'll probably collapse in a heap when he does. Tell me, what happened to that girl, Susan, who used to write to you in prison? She had a bit of money, didn't she? Yes, she's got a bit of money. I went round to see her. She's living with some foreigner. Mm. John, you don't see me as a sort of criminal type, do you? No. Why do you ask? Well, the idea of going to work as a door-to-door -door salesman or clerk or something is quite repugnant to me. I was wondering if I could interest you in a little scheme. Scheme? Yes, scheme. Come, we'll catch the number nine bus outside. It'll take us to the spot I have in mind. Charles, it's pouring outside. Can't we go tomorrow? Now, just stroll down the street with me and listen very carefully to what I have to say. You see that bank across the street? You mean the North London Commercial? Yes. If I gave you a foolproof plan for robbing that establishment, would it be of interest to you? Me? Rob a bank? Oh, oh come, Charles. Flogging off army trucks is one thing, but robbing a bank? Oh, no, you can't be serious. I'm deadly serious. I've thought very, very carefully about this. Done a great deal of research. And we won't talk here. Don't want to be noticed. Carry on down the street. Make a mental note of the general area. Then back to my place. You never know who. take your coat. Now sit down, yeah. have a drink and hear me out. <laughs> You'll never convince me. I simply will not be part of anything criminal again. You're going to change your mind. Now listen, and listen carefully. There's a spate of bombs being planted around London. The Irish are taking most of the blame, but there are others. What do you think would happen if an Irish voice on the telephone advised the manager of the North London Commercial Bank that there was a bomb on the premises and it was scheduled to go off within 45 minutes of the call. Call the police and evacuate the building, I suppose. Exactly. Then what would happen? Well, I suppose they'd either let the building blow up or call in the army bomb disposal unit. And what do you think they'd do in this case? Well, I should imagine they'd endeavor to save the property. 
Explosion in that area could cause serious damage. Might even start an uncontrollable fire. I don't know. I'm only guessing. Well, don't guess. They would call in the army. It's standard procedure. Now, the bank's empty. The area's been cleared. First... We'll acquire from one of those army disposal places a Land Rover. We'll clean it up, give it phony regimental plates, and you, dressed as a sergeant, will be the driver. Hmm. I'll travel with you as a major. After I've made the call to the bank, we'll give it 15 minutes. By this time, the bank will have been cleared and the area partially evacuated by the police. We'll drive up to the first roadblock we see and ask to speak to the man in charge. We'll pass ourselves off as bomb disposal men. Sent to the scene. Oh, it's a bit early, isn't it? Those chaps aren't supermen, you know. Denford Army Camp's at least an hour away. Anyway, they'd probably use a helicopter to fly them in. We'll only do this operation if the weather is such that an aircraft can't fly. No helicopter pilot will risk flying amongst tall buildings if his visibility is nil. The beauty of the situation is that we can do the job any Thursday. So, weather permitting, it'll be four weeks from today. Weather permitting, you sound like a cricket commentator. <laughs> and before you go on, why Thursday? Because on Thursdays, it makes up the wage packets of some 50 factories. And I should mention here, John, dear boy, that I'm talking about over half a million pounds. Half a million pounds? That's right. Uh, where was I before you interrupted? At the roadblock, conning the constable. Ah, yes. Now, we get to the man in charge and the bank manager. Now, this, John, is the only part of the scheme which may go wrong. But I'm assuming that the bank manager will stay on the scene. I'll introduce myself, get all the information I can out of the bank manager, and his keys to the vaults. <laughs> Why is he going to give you the keys to the vaults? Because when I phone him, I'll tell him that the bomb is in one of the vaults. I won't say which one. So as long as he plays ball... We're now driving through deserted streets, and we arrive at a deserted bank. Huh? Uh -huh. I can see you're getting interested. Now, we go inside the bank, open the vaults, and pack all the money and goodies into the toolbox which you, my dear sergeant, are carrying. And then, old boy, my piece de resistance. We take our uniforms off and put on overalls. We place the uniforms and a bomb. Yes? Hmm? Yes. A bomb. I did a course in explosives, you may remember. Well, we'll place the bomb in one of the vaults. Give it a ten-minute fuse and leave the bank by the staff entrance at the back. That entrance is going to be open, is it? I'm relying on the fact that people leaving a building in a hurry are not going to stop to lock doors. Fair enough. Now, 100 yards to the rear of the bank is Victoria Street. And on the corner is a manhole cover. It leads to the sewers and we go down. Oh, really, Charles, it's a bit melodramatic. If the police have cleared the area, there's nobody around to catch us anyway. We could soon disappear. Down the sewers, really. Don't be frivolous. You see, the bomb I'll have planted in the vault will level the bank building. And I'll hate by some stroke of fate to be injured by falling debris. Uh, now, before you ask, by destroying the building, they'll never know what money was stolen and what wasn't. And what is brought out will be untraceable. You know the sewer layout? Yes. Got my hands on a London County Council map, sanitation department. Uh, we'll come out about three quarters of a mile to the north. And there'll be a car waiting there for us. I'll have hired it earlier in the day. And, of course, they'll assume we have gone up with a building. Oh, a nice touch. They won't even be looking for us. <laughs> Do I take it that I can count you in? Uh, I didn't say that, Charles. A few things I don't like. Such as? You and I are going to be standing talking to a police officer and a bank manager, neither of whom will be fools. They're going to remember exactly what we look like. The police in their plodding methodical manner will soon pin us down. Oh, firstly, I shall be wearing glasses and a blonde hairpiece. And I shall cultivate a moustache. I think it'll be effective. Me? What do I do? You wear two pairs of overalls under your uniform to give an appearance of excess weight. And I think perhaps a hairpiece of reddish colour showing below your beret. When we emerge from the sewer like highly odoriferous moles, where do we go? Well, we come back here, divide the money up equally, and I'll return the car to the car hire firm. Then we part company forever. Where you go is your business, and where I go is mine. Well, Charles, I, I must compliment you on your little drama. Uh, let me think it over this evening. I, I'll meet you here tomorrow morning at nine o'clock and let you have my decision. John, I'm relying on you as an officer and a gentleman.
to say nothing about what has taken place. You have my word as an ex-convict and potential bank robber. Good night, Charles. Oh, one other thing. You did say earlier on that you were contemplating stealing half a million pounds. Yes, John, dear boy. Half a million pounds. A gentleman wouldn't dream of stealing anything less. Oh, of course. Oh, please sit down somewhere. Sorry the place is rather untidy. I must have overslept. I didn't sleep at all, actually. Really? Well, what's your decision? I've decided that I'll join this little venture. <laughs> Bravo. Now, it'll take us about three weeks to organize everything. There's the vehicle, explosives, uniforms. It'll all take time. Now, I've typed out a complete plan of attack. Now, here's your copy. First... The Land Rover. We won't buy it in London. There's a surplus army place down in South Wales. You go down there and buy a vehicle. Mm. It doesn't have to be much good mechanically, as long as it looks all right. We can clean it up. Uniforms will be easy. I think uh, we've still got our own, come to think of it. Hair pieces? Well, relatively simple. Get those from any theatrical suppliers. Two box. Then a moustache. Yes, it'll take me about three weeks to grow one. Right, I've managed to borrow money for the vehicle... You take it and get yourself off to Wales. Wales? Isn't that a bit far away? Oh, far away, but necessary. The longer it takes them to trace us, the better chance we have of getting away with it. Anyway, apparently, it's the only place you're going to get surplus army vehicles. I ought to know. I sold them most of the equipment they've got. <laughs> I'll see you when I get back from... Indeed to goodness. Sir. Well, we've got everything together. It's been a long three weeks. Yes, I've just heard the weather forecast. The weather tomorrow is lousy. Fog and rain, not very nice flying weather. So we can rule out helicopters. Very well. And tomorrow it is. Tomorrow we steal half a million pounds. Susan, what's the first thing your mummy would say if Daddy said, I'm taking you to Europe on holiday? Can I go too and make a big performance? No, <laughs> no. I mean, if your mummy was going to Europe, what would she say? She'd take in the cat come too. <laughs> the cat? <laughs> and what's the first thing you'd do if you were going to Europe? I'd be the standard bank of our travel deal insurance. You would? Yes. Travel deal insurance, eh? Why? Because Daddy said we won't go on holiday without it. Ladies, now you can dress in high fashion at unbelievably low cost. Thousands of South African women acclaim Janome sewing machines, which not only simplify dressmaking, but give your work a real professional touch. Janome is a quality-built sewing machine which tacks, hems, smocks, darns, and does all kinds of fancy or plain stitching perfectly. What's more, Janome comes in a full range of models, and every machine carries a lifetime guarantee. You can do so much more with a Janome. Evan speaking. Is that the manager? Yes. Can I help you? No, you can't help me, but I can help you. Mr. Evans, there's a bomb in your bank big enough to blow your building sky high. What? It'll go off in approximately three quarters of an hour. I is this some kind of a joke? No, Mr. Evans, this is not some kind of a joke. The bomb is carefully hidden in one of your vaults. Don't try to search for it. The slightest disturbance will set it off prematurely. Goodbye, Mr. Evans. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, is that emergency? Oh, get me the police. Hello, my name's Evans. I'm manager of the Riverside branch of the North London Commercial Bank. I have just received a phone call to say that there's a bomb in my bank scheduled to go off in 45 minutes' time. That was about three minutes ago. An Irish voice. Oh, yes, yes, there's no panic. I'll arrange the evacuation of the bank. You're on your way. Your, na your name's Dawson. 
Inspector Dawson. Mm. Right? And so I'll meet you at the end of the street, well clear of the building. Thank you. Nothing more I can tell you, Inspector. The bank. Was it locked up when you left? All the teller's cages were locked and the vaults. But the main doors and the staff entrance at the back have been left open. I saw little point in locking up. Anyway, it's too late now. But what plan of action have you formulated, Inspector? Well, the whole area within a half mile of the bank has been cleared. The army bomb disposal boys have been called in. And if they get here in time, they'll attempt to defuse the bomb. Assuming there is a bomb. You mean this whole thing could be a hoax? Oh, I'm not saying that. There are plenty of cranks around. Surely the army could use one of their helicopters to get here? In this weather, they can't get a helicopter off the ground. Even the birds are walking. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know much about these things. Right, John. I made the call ten minutes ago. It'll take five minutes to reach the first roadblock. Get moving. Right. A little faster, John. This is supposed to be an emergency. This thing won't go much faster. You said to get a cheap one, I did. I'm glad we don't have to leave in it. So am I. Now, straight ahead. Yes, you've been waved down. Pull in. Stay here. I'll go and talk to the constable. Find out who's in charge. Come on, Charlie boy. Don't talk to him all day. Come on. You're like an old woman sometimes, Charles. What's happening? Calm down. See? They're opening the barrier. And Inspector Dawson and the bank manager are a quarter of a mile down the road. Now be a good driver and take us there. Through the first hurdle. Everything is going according to plan. Hope it stays that way. I'm, I'm looking for Inspector Dawson. Yes, that's me. Uh, Cartwright, Major Cartwright, bomb disposal unit. Oh, he got here quickly? Yes, they raised us on the radio. We were on our way back to the camp. Uh, been down at the territorial camp most of the morning, giving a demonstration. Oh. Now, uh, can I speak to the person who took the call? Oh, that's him over there, the bank manager. His name's Evans. Oh. Uh, morning, Mr. Evans. Cartwright, how do you do? Uh, can you tell me exactly what the man said on the telephone? All he said was that a bomb had been placed in one of the vaults and it'd go off in three quarters of an hour. That was... Sixteen uh... minutes ago, Mr. Evans. Go on. That's all he said. How many vaults are there? Four. Do you think it's possible for a bomb to have been planted in the vaults? Well, the only time it could have happened was early this morning when the security company delivered tomorrow's wages. Our men are already at the security company, Major. But they haven't come up with anything yet. Mm. Mr. Evans, which vault is used for the wage money? Vault number one. Uh, the vaults are clearly numbered? Yes. Uh, the money, what is it delivered to your bank in? Large metallic boxes, about three feet, two feet. Mm. Today's delivery, has it been attended to yet? Yes. The system is this. Vault one is more of a maximum security office than a vault in the true sense. Uh, three clerks and a senior member of my staff removed the money from the boxes and, uh, with the aid of computer information, the wage packets are made up. And they were doing this when you got the call? Yes. Had they emptied all the boxes? No, uh, they were quarters of the way through. All the boxes are unlocked, but there's three which haven't been attended to. Mm. So we could assume that if there is a bomb, it'll be in one of those three. And the other three vaults? Well, they're the normal setup, a safe to deposit boxes, legal documents, spare cash. Mm, I see. Right. Now, how do we open the vaults? Each vault door has a key, and each door has its own combination. The combination is changed daily. I'm the only one who can open them. If you're going in, I must come with you. I have no intention of taking you in there, Mr. Evans. That would be asking too much. Please let me have the combinations and the keys. But this is highly irregular. Good heavens, man. Irregular? Until I get in there, I don't know what type of bomb it is. It might be big enough to destroy everything within half a mile. 
Do you want to see that happen? It's only money in there, and I assure you, I have no intention of stealing it. Uh, very well. Um, uh, here are the keys, and this is today's code. Uh, the tumbler switch is are very simple to operate. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Uh, Inspector, if there was any accuracy in the information the bank was given on the telephone, the bomb is scheduled to go off in 30 minutes. My sergeant and I will now leave for the bank. Under no circumstances is anybody to approach the building. I take it the area has been cleared. Yes, it has. Very well. I will endeavor to locate the bomb. If we can't find it, or we do find it and can't defuse it within the next 20 minutes, we leave the bank and return here. Are you in agreement? Well, there's little else you can do. I wish you luck. Thank you, Inspector. Goodbye, Mr. Evans. I hope to see you later. Very well, Sergeant. To the bank. takes care of the second hurdle. There it is. The bank robber's dream. A bank empty of people and full of beautiful money. Come on, forget the speeches. Give me a hand with the toolbox. Said the bolts were downstairs? Yes. Over there. Right. First, the combination starting with vault one. Key to the right. Right. Now, the keys. we go. Pack the toolbox full. Didn't expect to see it lying around like this. Thought it would be locked away in some kind of box. Needn't have brought the tools. We must have been in the middle of counting the stuff or something. Anyway, who we to reason why? This is going to be a very tidy sum. What? You just stand there. Get your uniform off. Uh, certainly. Pass mine over, old boy. Here. Oh, not a very good fit. Must have a word with my tailor. <laughs> How's the time? Yeah, ten minutes to go. Good. The bomb I'll put at the far end of Vault 1 with the uniforms. You wait here. Right. The bomb's in there. I've set the fuse. It goes off in 19 minutes' time, which is exactly 45 minutes from the time the bank manager received the call. <laughs> Quite brilliant, don't you think? Now, I'll tell you what. We're five minutes ahead of schedule. Let's go down into Vault 4. That's the one with the private safety deposit boxes. Now, bring a hammer and chisel. Let's see if I can smash some of the locks open. Are you crazy? We've got enough already. Let's not waste time. Remember, there's a bomb in there. I'm running this operation, John. Now, come along. Thirty feet long. Yeah. Pass me the hammer. We we'll go down the end there. That's it. Now give me a hand with the safety deposit drawer. Right. Right. Now. Now. <laughs> Here we are. What's that? I don't know. Let's get out of here. The vault door. It's closing. Run! A 
Announcing the complete detergent. New Darto. New Darto. It's all your whole family's wash needs for dazzling whiteness. And brilliant brightness. And stain removal. And easy rinsing. And all temperature action. New Darto. What more could a mother want for her family's wash? Now you pump what you want for your whole family's wash. New Darto is a pump's best friend. New Darto. The complete detergent. When holiday driving gets hot and sticky, watch for the most heartwarming sight on South Africa's highways, a mobile restaurant oasis. Freshen up in a well-equipped restroom and enjoy a delicious snack or meal in a sparkling clean restaurant while mobile attendants top up your tank and clean your windows. Mobile restaurant road stops, now on most major South African routes. We're trapped in here, Charles. Trapped. What went wrong? Something I didn't think of. When we smashed that safety deposit drawer open, it must have set the alarm system off and closed the vault door electronically. You know what this means? Yes. There's nobody in the bank to hear the alarm. Nobody to let us out. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, old boy. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Have a cigarette. Tell me, where were you going? Spain. Really? So was I. Do you think they got clear, Inspector? No, Mr. Evans. I don't think so. And you know something? I can't even remember their names. I don't suppose it really matters, Inspector. They were two very brave men. I shall always remember how they looked when they drove off to the bank. Calm, cool, and collected. Where do we find such men? If you're middle-aged and troubled by forgetfulness, restless sleep, lack of vigor, and odd aches and pains, try Salusa 45. Salusa 45's remarkable formula actually helps you feel and look years younger. Salusa 45 helps give you new physical and mental energy. It can even help combat the symptoms of aging too quickly. Enjoy life. Feel years younger. Try Salusa 45. High Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal. I was on my way to London via Amsterdam. You overstayed? Yes. Me too. <laughs> I was amazed. Such a fantastic atmosphere and the people. By KLM to exciting Amsterdam. All right, let's look ahead a little bit and find out what we have in store for you. As usual, at half past nine on Thursday nights, it'll be the epic casebook in which Inspector Carr investigates. Then at ten o'clock, Music of the Americas with our featured artist, Dean Martin. Quarter past ten, The World of Hammond Innes. Then follows our late-night newscast. Right now, a time check for half past nine here on Springbok Radio. West Point, Eiskaster and Frieskaster. How oh, all is the coatster? <laughs>